Welcome back to Q101. I always feel like a radio announcer when I say that. That's right, the basics of quilting, step-by-step -step quilting. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome to Making It Fun. I love to teach quilting, and usually we do full-blown projects or shop tours or something here, but I really want to take and break down these steps of quilting. So right now we're on step number four. Where we're going to build blocks coming back together kind of from our unit. So if you've been watching the other videos, we've already done the cutting and the piecing and the pressing. And so we're doing very, very basics right now. So I was just taking these squares. So if you're talking about vocabulary or definitions, uh, the squares became the units and we could put a couple of units together to become blocks. And we were talking in the pressing video about pressing to the dark side. And if you'll look carefully by pressing to the dark side, you can see here the seams are now leaning one direction. And so therefore I can rotate them and set them up so that the seams will actually nest or crisscross each other, which makes for much better uh, bulk management. So in a situation like this, if I was building a block out of these very, very basic units called squares, I would just nest these seams together just ever so nicely, one laying one way, one laying the other. And then I'm gonna come on over to my sewing machine like this, and I'm just gonna do a very basic quarter inch seam allowance. And of course I have an edge guide and I like to back stitch as I'm getting started. And we're just gonna sew right through here. And then it's that easy, really. I would come over to my ironing surface and I would just press it to one side. And you can see now my four square units have formed this block. And a lot of times our quilts are gonna be built on a block concept. So we're gonna build maybe 24 or 36 or 40 blocks, something like that. But this was just way too easy for even for the simplest of videos. So let's talk about another very famous unit. The unit we all know as the half square triangles. So this is a square and it's divided in half diagonally making two triangles and it's an awesome design unit. We do have a free pattern for you to use to follow along on all of this stuff that makes a quilt you see over here on the wall from materialgirlfriends.com. Laura and Lisa created this wonderful recovery quilt using X's and O blocks, but everything's built off of the half square triangle because the half square triangle as a unit makes wonderful blocks because you can put them together and do all kinds of silly fun things like this one here. Whoop, let me see if I can even do it for you quickly as I go about like this one they call the pinwheel, right? looks like a pinwheel. Of course, you could put them back together in opposites like this. This one is actually what they refer to as a broken dish. And in the quilt over here, we're using a variety of different colors. So you're coming back together uh, often with things going on, you know, like this, where you get a lot of fun exchange of the different colors, but nonetheless, they're still half square triangles. And there are a variety of ways to make half square triangles. Let's just quickly blow through a couple of the easiest. Uh, real nice and quick here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. Maybe it's a little easier to see. I have two squares. It doesn't matter what size they are as long as they are the same size. I'm gonna go ahead and take my ruler and I'm just gonna mark myself a light chalk line and that chalk line is now going to be a cut line so I'm actually going to do a quarter inch on both sides and I'm going to end up yielding two half square triangles this way so in a situation like this I will slide the edge guide out of the way lower the presser foot and now the presser foot is along the chalk line I just drew so I'm now giving myself a quarter inch from that chalk line and I'm going to stitch down one side over here and I'm just going to come right off the edge I'm going to drop my needle in the down position and just swing my fabric over, drop that foot again, and start sewing again with the presser foot on the other side, but right along that chalk line. So I'm creating two quarter inch seam allowances, yielding two half square triangles this way, get to the end. Of course, you could back stitch if you wanted to. We're just going to take this out like this. And now you could uh, use your rotary cutter as you should, nice and safe, right along that chalk line, and you'll cut that like that. 
and that will then yield two independent, of course you'll want to press those open, half square triangles. Super cool that way. The free pattern actually will walk you through four different ways of making your half square triangles. This is personally one of my favorites. We're going to go around all four sides. Watch this. So again, just another way of making those half square triangle units. I can slide the edge guide back in to keep everything calibrated and accurate because I'm going to start off of the edge and I'm going to sew down and all the way through all four sides. Of course, having that automatic pressure foot lift and needle down combination is certainly making my life nice and easy. And as I finish up this fourth side, again, I'm just going to sew off the end. I'm going to raise my pressure foot, cut my threads. And then what I like to do to just help with bulk down the road is I first take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut the corners off, also known as dog earing. I'm just going to dog ear those corners. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our rotary cutter and we're going to cut through, rotate again, and I'm basically putting it right where the thread's crossed. Cut through here, and now this one will yield four of those awesome half square triangles. So that's really, really cool. Now, when you get ready to assemble these, basically these just become blocks. So you'll make sure they're nice and pressed. And then depending on how the design is, it's going to be, you're just going to mount the blocks together like this. Excuse me, you're going to mount your units together. You would do a quarter inch seam allowance that way. And then what really happens with this kind of a design is you start to develop rows. So this is just one of the blocks from the pattern over here. And you can see I've gotten a little ahead of us because I want to finish out building a block together in this video. So you can see I put the half square triangles together, one, two, three, four of them, and I've created a row. I have four rows and I've already began sewing two of them together. What we're going to do now is I'm just going to match up where the seams are. Basically, where each of the units or the square, the half square triangles came together. Same thing, I'm just nesting my seams whenever possible. And I'm going to come on over to my sewing machine. And right now, I really want to make sure I've got a nice edge guide. Everything's calibrated great. Drop that presser foot. And I'm going to sew through. But now as I sew through, and of course, you could use straight pins if you like to, I'm just going to go ahead and manipulate these squares with a little bit of effort, because that's all it takes and make sure that I can line up the squares just one seam as I go. That's right. So I'll line up the next half square triangle units, making sure they're nice in there. And of course, you're just doing your best. And if you do more and more of this, you'll get better and better over time. A lot of us in the quilting world are strong believers in the galloping horse rule. <laughs> which I believe is stated a blind man uh, on a galloping horse in the dark would never see any mistakes we made, something like that. <laughs> I just like to press after each and every row I add on. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take that last one here, set it on place. and just begin stitching this and stitching this and building out the rest of the blocks for the quilt. It's really, really easy that way. And super, super fun. So while I get the rest of this block put together, I'm gonna let you get a head start on me and I'll see you in the next video while we have a really quick discussion on just how to put all of our rows together. I'll see you real soon.